All right, everybody uh, ready? It's time. 30 minutes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah! That's some end of the day energy. All right, yes, coffee. I have, yeah, and if anybody likes both Drupal and coffee, I have stickers that involve both of those things. So come, come get them. Yes. Um, coming to the session just paid off for everybody. Uh, anyway, I'm talking about how it's a 30 minute session and then I'm just rambling up at the front. So let's get in. Uh, so this is an external design system in practice. Um, and I am Brian Perry. I'm a uh, lead front-end developer at Bounteous. I live in the Chicago suburbs. I am a uh, lover of all things uh, component-based and component-driven, building with components in Drupal, uh, design systems and tools like Pattern Lab, and increasingly uh, building with component-based JavaScript frameworks like React. And I'm also a lover of all things Nintendo. So if you want to talk to me about uh, any of the cool games that you're playing, by all means. I am uh, available on the internet in a bunch of places and would love to internet with you however you see fit. And uh, I work at a company called Bounteous, and I, I really appreciate uh, them sending me out here. Work with a great team of uh, Drupal folks. Drupal is one of a handful of things that we do, um, but love the people that I work with. We also have an open architect position. If you're looking to, uh, to work with us, that would be wonderful. And uh, you might not know me as working at a company uh, called Bounteous. Maybe if you do know me, you know me uh, working at HS2 Solutions. Uh, I didn't quit, it is uh, the same company, we rebranded. And uh, this is kind of the jumping off point to, to the story and how uh, you know, I, I fell into using an external design system on a project and changing my approach a little bit. Um, so let's, uh, let's t look at this through the lens of uh, our rebranding story. So uh, we have our old uh, uh, HS2 Solutions website on the left and uh, our new Bounteous website on the right different sites. Uh, we were looking to launch our brand on November 5th, 2018. And even though it didn't really feel like it to me on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, the website was just one part of a larger coordinated effort. Press releases, new business cards, new email addresses, IT changes, and also a website. So uh, part of the reason that we were rebranding is that we had uh, a number of acquisitions and kind of New, new friends in the company. So we were actually looking to migrate a handful of different sites into a new Drupal 8 build. There was our Drupal 7 HS2 Solutions website, uh, lunametrics.com on WordPress, and Infield Digital also on WordPress. And uh, the main thing that we were migrating was the blog content, especially Lunametrics had a lot of uh, great, uh, rich blog content. And because we were rebranding some of the other content, we were just kind of gonna be recreating from scratch anyway. Uh, but Nate was uh, a dev taking the lead on the migration, so he's working on getting some of that data into our, a new Drupal 8 instance. And at the same time, I worked with uh, our XD team, uh, especially Leon uh, kind of taking the lead, who was doing uh, some initial wireframing for concepts for our new site um, in Sketch, sharing things in Envision. And then as best I could, I was following along in, uh, in as close to real time as possible, prototyping things in code uh, so that we could see it up on our feet, actually work with it in a browser, you know, experiment at non-traditional breakpoints, all of that good stuff. And then, uh, you know, the process continued. We had a, a more fully defined look and feel. Uh, Jolene was taking the lead on that and continued to do the same thing. Keep uh, working with these prototypes uh, and incorporate the stuff in code so we could see it in browser um, and, you know, work nicely. So at this point, we had a nice set of prototypes in a separate repository and uh, you know, a, a Pattern Lab uh, instance working with it. So the question that uh, we have to ask at this point is how are we gonna get that stuff uh, into our Drupal build? And how are we gonna make use of it and integrate it? And uh, I'm gonna use a somewhat ridiculous analogy to explain this uh, mustard mayonnaise versus separate mustard and mayonnaise. And if you uh, understand the Mustard Anna's reference, uh, congrats on being a, a comedy nerd as well. Uh, big points. But uh, so the, the Mustard Anna's approach was what I had mostly done in the past. So uh, Pattern Lab embedded in a Drupal theme. And a lot of the uh, component-based or Pattern Lab-friendly contrib themes do the same thing. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages to th this approach. So, uh, it's easier for Drupal to get at your components. They're right there in your theme. Potentially, there might be some ways that the build process is simplified in this case. Uh, for people who are not 
familiar with a component-based approach, um, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to wrap their heads around. They're going to look in the theme and find the things that they can then change. Um, but it's also definitely prone to uh, Drupal-specific things finding their way into the components. And then thinking of the, the jar of mustard and is here with the layers on top of each other, you, you, know, you put your, your knife in there and, and take some out. And then the mustard and mayonnaise starts to kind of get mixed up, and it gets harder and harder to just have mustard or just have mayonnaise, which you know, may, may or may not be a problem. Uh, alternatively, the, the state that we were at at this point in time is we had uh, an independent project. We had a completely separate repository that had our, our work in progress design system and a separate Drupal repository. Um, and you know, in theory, that, that's going to promote reuse beyond just the Drupal project. So the, you know, the question that we had to ask ourselves is where, where should we put the mustard? Question you got to ask yourself every day. Um, so we decided to keep the mustard separate. No uh, Heinz mayo must, which is a real thing that people can buy now for some reason. Um, uh, so it keeps the components Drupal agnostic. Uh, and I think in some ways it, it, it continues to encourage prototyping. You can still, if Panorama was embedded in your theme, you can still prototype in there. But I think it's really easy for people to just start hacking away at things in Drupal rather than doing lighter weight prototyping. And it's kind of more encouraged if it's separate. It already was a separate project, so it was kind of the path of least resistance. And then also, uh, you know, some gut feelings that go along with this. It's always kind of, this approach has always conceptually felt like the right thing, even if it wasn't what I was doing. Uh, advocated by many in the community whose opinions I trust, uh, big bonus there. Um, and in theory, it might let us reuse this on other web projects related to our brand. And also, it, it kind of felt right for our company. So especially in our time of growth with some of these acquisitions, a lot of, uh, you know, these are not all developers, but a number of them are front-end developers. And some of them work with Drupal, and some of them don't. But there's a lot of people who can write really great HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in our company. So uh, structuring things in such a way that uh, our more diverse set of, of skills could contribute on the front end was an attractive thing. So let's talk a little bit about how we approached it. So in the design system, um, and this is using the, the PHP version of Pattern Lab. Um, so we added a composer.json file, gave uh, the, the project a namespace, a name, description, and then defined a type of design system. We just made that up. It could be whatever we wanted to. And you'll, you'll see how that's used in a second. So then in the, uh, the composer.json file in the Drupal project, uh, in the repository section, we added uh, our GitHub, uh, sorry, Bitbucket repository, right next to packages.drupal.org. Um, so they can be uh, aware of that dependency. And then in the extra section here, we added uh, installer types of design system. And then we can define exactly how that uh, a dependency of type design system is handled. Um, so in this particular case, we already had uh, a number of composer dependencies at the, you know, the root of our project, managing the, the Drupal project as a whole. I personally wanted to avoid having other composer dependencies in other places of, of our project. So that's why I took this approach. Um, but I did find that if in the kind of default location for the, the vendor uh, dependencies, it was hard to get at uh, templates and things. So that's why, uh, in this case, copying them to a library's directory in the theme. So it's just kind of part of the process when we pull in the new dependency. Um, for future versions of Pattern Lab, the node version of Pattern Lab going forward might take a different approach uh, because you know the node dependencies would be separate from our project level composer dependencies. But this is what we did in this project, and it, it worked nicely. So now that allows us to require the design system as a dependency. So we can go composer require and require our design system. For the pre-launch cycle, we required it at, uh, at dev because things were kind of moving fast. Um, and then we can run composer update when we want to consume new changes from the design system. So uh, on the, the Drupal side, we have control over that. Um, we can decide when we want to bring in new things. We tag major releases uh, in the design system. Um, we often did still just require things at, at, at head, but it was helpful to be able to uh, lock at a specific release or roll back to certain releases at different points in the process. So it gives you some control there. And then incorporating it into the theme, uh, 
really pretty common, straightforward stuff here, but uh, the compiled assets um, are in a global library. So we have our uh, compiled CSS file, a couple of JavaScript bundles. So that stuff is available to our theme now. And then using the components module, defined uh, a few twig namespaces, a little image shortcut for some image assets that we're using in a handful of different places. And then the kind of different levels of our design system, not the default uh, atomic design naming, but in the neighborhood. Um, so now all that stuff is uh, available to our theme. So uh, an interesting workflow that we kind of uh, fell into working on the project, we had uh, Sean, uh, who, whoops, uh, who uh, can Drupal, but definitely is someone who uh, is the m most efficient just writing good CSS, uh, JavaScript, and HTML that's CMS agnostic. So he built out the majority of our remaining components in the design system um, and only had uh, two commits in the Drupal repository, but he is, was, at the end of the day, responsible for the bulk of our theme. And then uh, Wade was kind of the middleman handing, handling the component integration. So he was wiring the design system components, uh, you know, doing the mapping, adding them to layouts. Uh, the bulk of his effort was in the Drupal repository, but uh, sometimes he would make changes in the design system if it's maybe something that uh, Drupal needed that wasn't accounted for or situations where it could make his life a little bit easier. So that, that general, that, that split worked pretty nicely, we found. And then, uh, as often happens in projects, uh, there were some interesting bumps along the way, some changes in scope, um, that having this design system as an external dependency uh, opened up some interesting options. So, uh, there was the, uh, the Lunametric site. Uh, they offer uh, like analytics trainings throughout the country, um, and they have a, a place where you can go register for trainings and, and sign up. And it was determined that in the time frame that we had, we weren't going to be able to rebuild the training section of the site, especially because they added some new functionality and new integrations, and we'd basically be just like dumping it and rebuilding it again. Um, but since we had uh, this design system, I, I don't even know that we would have been able to consider this otherwise. Uh, we determined that we were going to attempt to keep just the training section of their WordPress site uh, alive, uh, but have it match the look and feel of the rest of our Drupal 8 build. So for the actual WordPress integration, we worked with uh, a company, Walia Creative, and they handled the uh, original uh, build of the Lunametric site um, and were available to help us reskin it, which was great because we needed some extra hands at that point. And uh, they also introduced uh, me to the Timber plugin, which I had never uh, heard of before, which makes it possible to use Twig in WordPress. I like their slogan because WordPress is awesome, but the loop isn't. I, I yep, yeah. Continued cheering from the crowd. Um, Timber is awesome. Yes, I, I agree. Um, so uh, they uh, created an initial prototype using uh, Timber and our design system and used all the components uh, with their Twig templates in place. And it allowed them to kind of get uh, a prototype up and running quickly and kind of prove out that it was going to be possible to do this rescan in the time that we had. Um, leading up to the launch, uh, especially like trying to hit our timeline, there was uh, a little bit less of the, the timber use and a little bit more traditional theming that, that kind of happened. And we'll, we'll revisit that later. Uh, but this is uh, just a simple example of what it might look like. So on our uh, training page, we have a list of upcoming trainings and individual like training items stacked on top of each other here. So looking at some of the, the templates in the WordPress code base, we've got this training module PHP, uh, a wrapping div with some classes in it, and then a for loop that just assembles the data that we want to pass into this uh, component so we get our training element. Uh, it's not unlike uh, you know, a render array or some of the mapping that we might do in a, in a Twig template, in a Drupal presenter template. And then the uh, training element PHP template uh, is just going to render the template from our design system with the data that was made available to this template. So we just render the Twig template and we get the same training item as we would expect. Pretty nice. So we, we at the end of the day, get a, a training section still on the WordPress site, but incorporated into the main menu on our, our Drupal site that has the you know, exact same look and feel using a lot of the same assets um, all together. 
And then, uh, very close to launch, we also found out, found out that we would be having some uh, other new friends join our company, DMAC Media, in Canada. Um, and their site was going to be rebranded as Bounteous.ca. Um, because of the timeline and, and for some other reasons, it was definitely going to be a, a bit of a smaller scale site. And it was acknowledged that you know, some of the look and feel was going to be different, but hopefully you know, in the same neighborhood. Um, but still, having this design system really changed the conversation. We had a first call to kind of get our developers together, and I was able to say, we have this design system repository, give you access to it. Here's what you know, assets are available, what tools are in there. You know, there's a Pattern Lab instance. Um, and they were able to use it how they saw fit. So they you know, reused some important assets, uh, you know, some of the SVG backgrounds and things like that. And, kind of were picking and choosing more a la carte different classes and, and structure and things like that. But it, again, allowed them to skin this site uh, really quickly. So uh, we did it. We made our intended, uh, I guess it was, I think it was November 5th uh, launch date, and we had all of our uh, sites under the, the bounteous look and feel using the design system. Um, everybody took a nap. And then uh, we uh, move on post-launch. So um, I was kind of transitioning off of uh, the, the day to day and other developers were coming on to help out and maintain. Uh, Kyle and Steve were some folks who were involved um, early on. And so at this point, the WordPress sites are definitely changing less, um, a little bit more of just a maintenance thing. And the, the new functionality and the, the new tickets are definitely focused on new things on the Drupal 8 site. Um, so, uh, for new people coming on board, especially their day-to-day -day is Drupal, um, you know, putting words in their mouths a little bit, but I think there was a little bit of the feeling of why, why can't I just Drupal? Why do I have to make my commits in the design system and uh, pull that dependency down? And again, you know, I expect to just be able to look in, in the theme there. So some lessons learned from that uh, is that uh, the documentation is important. I um, you know, had documentation in the readme, some stuff on Confluence, but I think a thing that uh, was missed that could have helped was getting into the why even in the, the documentation a little bit beyond just the how. So explaining what some of the advantages are, why we took this approach, and potentially even some of the disadvantages. I think that would have made it a, a little bit easier for people to come on board. And then uh, one thing that I was able to, to take on uh, before people started rolling on and off was improving the workflow a little bit. Um, so uh, you know, now that we were making smaller scale changes and a little bit more focused on Drupal, we just needed to improve the workflow so it was easier to experiment inside of Drupal without having to like make commits in the design system first and pull them down to, to take a look at it. So nothing really all that uh, complicated here, but some gulp tasks that just made that a little bit easier to experiment, see things how, looked in, how things looked in Drupal, and then commit that back to the design system and pull it in, uh, you know, in the traditional build process. But it, it does definitely add some overhead. There's, there's, you know, potentially a cost here. And then also, uh, and while this was a challenge in some cases, uh, it, it definitely is a positive one from my perspective. The lines between the CMSs started to blur a little bit here. So, you know, like we changed the hover style for those training items that we saw before. Um, and people would expect that to appear in both places. And you make that change once, and it would just work everywhere. But the training site was, was in WordPress. And as I mentioned, uh, there were some cases where we took a little bit more of a traditional approach to be able to get things out the door. Um, so Kristen working on QA and, and John, our kind of uh, marketing lead guy, who also is in air quotes because he, he gets his hands dirty on the WordPress site uh, secretly sometimes. Sold him out on this talk. but. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, they expected the changes to apply everywhere. So what we did uh, following the pressure of the launch is load on uh, more of the, the timber approach, made it a little bit easier to uh, pull in the assets and dependencies in the, the design system in the WordPress site as well. So you may uh, be asking yourself at this point um, what approach you should take in the future. Um, you probably know where this is going, that there definitely is not a one-size-fits-all opinion there, or no real answer. But um, your needs might be different, right? This, might, this definitely isn't going to make sense for everybody. So uh, the Lullabot site 
they uh, did a great blog post on their recent rebuild, and uh, they have a, a podcast episode that goes into detail on it. Um, and they, uh, you know, have a different company makeup, a different focus. They wanted to be able to have, uh, you know, a group of amazing Drupal experts uh, to be able to do as much, you know, traditional Drupal and take advantage of that uh, experience as possible. So they tried to focus on uh, using as much, you know, core and common contrib, um, et cetera. Um, so for a case like Wallabot, maybe this approach doesn't make as much sense. And then other things to, to consider when, when trying to figure out, you know, where, where to put your mayo and mustard is uh, if there's going to be value in reusing these components. There are certainly going to be situations where maybe they really aren't going to be used outside of this one particular build. Um, but, uh, you know, especially from this experience, sometimes it's hard to know for sure. I really didn't know that that was going to be as important as it was going into this project. And then, uh, again, uh, the prototyping end of it, uh, you know, I think that uh, having things separated uh, and not quite as tied into the theme makes it a little bit easier and lower resistance to prototype, so can encourage that a little bit more. And then also, potentially, you know, if you're looking to publish uh, your design system or a style guide independently, there are potentially some advantages from having that separate as well. And then there's also, you know, your general workflow and your team makeup to consider. Um, so, you know, is this approach going to fit nicely into your workflow or could it be easily adjusted to allow it? Um, and then will it allow more people to contribute as well? Uh, and again, um, while it's not a once it flies for all solution, I think it did uh, work nicely for us. And again, I'm hoping that going forward, it's going to allow uh, folks who can do great front end work to contribute to our website, which I think is a, a good thing for our company. And uh, yeah, pretty much it. Uh, one other thing to, to mention, uh, A, plugging a session, but also another thing that we're thinking about uh, on a, a project that I'm working on right now is uh, we have a like uh, progressively decoupled site and we have um, you know, styles and even some components that are going to be in common between Drupal and React, looking at ways that we can, can do this. Um, so one thing that we've been looking at um, in the CSS and JS space is uh, CSS modules. And that offers some interesting possibilities as far as being able to use the same uh, partials that go into maybe a fully compiled uh, style sheet that's used in Drupal, but can also be pulled in on a component by component basis in React. So that's definitely something that we're exploring is pretty interesting. And uh, John Alvin has a talk tomorrow um, on his experience with uh, CSS modules and an overview of some CSS and JS solutions. Um, it's an interesting talk, so check it out. Uh, that is uh, pretty much it. I, I cannot believe it, but I do have time for questions if anybody has questions. And if you don't, that's cool too. We made it to the end of the day. I, uh, hands in the back. If you guys could come up and use the mics, that would be amazing. Thank you. I, and I also want everyone to get exercise. Yay, exercise. Okay, so it sounds like this method of making your pattern library an ex external dependency is really uh, excellent if you're sharing a pattern library between multiple projects, yes? Yes. And perhaps less useful if you're not. In, in general, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the comment was that it's uh, more useful if it's a design system shared between projects and less useful if it's not. That is true. Uh, there are still potentially some advantages and conceptually it feels like the right thing, but uh, there's overhead, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Great talk. Thanks. Uh, what would you do differently? If you were to start, you know, in hindsight, after going through all of, the, all of this stuff in practice, start from scratch, brand new project, clean slate, what would you do differently, or where do you see this kind of going next? Yeah, that, that is an awesome question. Um, I think that I, you know, uh, again, timelines make it hard, but I would have tried to get everyone to stick to our guns a little bit more on the WordPress side and really use the same components uh, as much as we can. So we didn't have to refactor that afterwards. Um, and in general, I, I do think we found a really nice uh, kind of workflow, but we had to kind of discover it with our particular team makeup. So something that still is a, always a pain point for me is the right way to handle the integration and the mapping between the design system and Drupal. And uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. 
but it, it, it's always a little bit of feeling around in the dark still for, for us. And uh, the more that could be kind of a lockdown approach and the more tools that could help us with that, the better. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there too. I agree. Awesome, thanks. Hi, um, I have a, we're working on a site where the client needs to see the pattern lab um, instance mm -hmm. be in a URL. Did you, did you come across that type of use case and do you have suggestions for how to get an instance of the pattern lab within a, a URL for the sure. site? Sure. Yeah, so the, the question was uh, they have a project where they want to be able to see an instance of the pattern lab online somewhere where people can see it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a handful of ways to do that. Um, so uh, pattern lab can be used as essentially a static site generator to create a static build of the pattern lab that you can then pretty much host anywhere. So if you have a place that can host the static build of pattern lab, you can put it up on there. That you could put it on something like GitHub Pages if you needed to. Um, alternatively, uh, in the case where you do embed pattern lab in a Drupal theme, if that makes sense for your project, um, you can actually access it there potentially because it's in your theme as well. So that's an another potential approach. But, um, but yeah, it, it can build for you the static version of Pattern Lab, and you can host it pretty much anywhere. Yes, that, that was our reason for embedding Pattern Lab. But uh, as I'm rethinking it, I'm wondering if we can have it externally, but also have it as part of the build process within the site URL. Um, yeah, it definitely should be possible. I mean, it kind of depends a little bit on the rest of your build process, but yeah. should be doable. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, hey. Great talk. Uh, Thanks. Appreciate the topics. Um, how were you handling releases, release notes, versions? Like, hey, you know, because it's it's it, there's a lot about being like, hey, let's launch it, but then what happens after? Yep. And so I'd like to hear some of the things that you did, and also a little bit of things that you wish you did as well. Yeah, I mean, the honest answer is that how we're handling releases and versions is not as well as we should have. Uh, so that, that that's kind of a big gap. Um, and we were still tagging releases, but definitely were not as, uh, as you know, formal with consuming them. And uh, the, the design system itself mostly kind of served as the documentation, so we didn't have like good patch notes or anything. Um, I would say in general that that's probably uh, a, a, an area of failure uh, for us. And uh, I think we just need to be more rigid about it. We need to tag releases and uh, it's fine to have a lot of releases and be a little bit more strict about what gets pulled in on the Drupal side as a dependency. Um, so I, I don't really have a, a great answer there, but I agree that it's important. Yeah, great. And then a second question. Um, with Timber, uh, any kind of gotchas uh, that you came across that you want to share? Yeah. Um, I mean, not a ton. Um, so. One thing uh, that, that I ran into is that the the, uh, the Timber module, they made some major updates recently and are basically like, stay on the old version. We're kind of fine by the seat of our pants on, on uh, the new one. They actually like disabled the update link in the, the uh, plugins page. <laughs> uh, so mostly that, but uh, aside from that, I, I found it pretty easy and reliable. It's great to hear. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thanks. Cool. Those are some awesome questions. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, stickers. Everybody get some stickers. <laughs>